Zero is one of the most impressive demos from E3, and we can't wait to see what else this From Software title has in store. Luckily, we can gather a few more details based on what we saw behind closed doors and in this trailer. Let's dive into it. One of the first things we see is the statue here, which appears to be committing seppuku, a form of ritual suicide involving disembowelment. Practiced by Japanese samurai, the act was seen as a way to die with honor rather than at the hands of the enemy, but it was also imposed as capital punishment for samurai who had committed serious crimes. It's important to note here that Sekiro has you playing as a shinobi or a ninja, seeking revenge on a samurai who wronged him. The four-armed statue can be seen here again in this shot of Bushi of the Desolate Temple. Bushi is an aging man with no left arm. He's a hermit who secludes himself in a desolate mountain temple carving statues. He gathers up the player character after they are defeated by the commander of Ashina and offers them assistance, essentially Sekiro's equivalent of Gurman and the doll from Bloodborne or a Dark Souls Firekeeper. The desolate temple could possibly function as Sekiro's hub world, like the hunter's dream in Bloodborne. However, during our private demo, IGN asked a representative from the Sekiro team about the structure of the game, and while they wanted to remain vague for now, they did hint that it would be more akin to that of Dark Souls, which could even make the desolate temple more of a firelink shrine. But we'll have to wait and see. Here we get a look at a younger character who I believe is the Prince. One of your goals in Sekiro is to rescue a kidnapped Prince. According to the official Japanese website, the Prince is the sole surviving descendant of an ancient clan. He is alone in the world. The Ashina clan, which was a real clan that came around during the Sengoku period of Japan, believe the Prince is key to preventing their decline and abduct him. What do they want to do with him? Sacrifice him? What we see next is a flashback sequence, in which we see the player character lose his left arm. You can't see it's intact in the establishing shot. Shinobi notably stands in front of the prince, protecting him. The Japanese site states that the Bushi of the Desolate Temple takes in the Shinobi after he is defeated by the commander of the Ashina, which I'm guessing is this guy. What if this is the first boss fight in the game, and one you're doomed to lose? After the fateful battle, Shinobi wakes in the Desolate Temple with his new prosthetic arm. The old man says, it looks like death is not your fate. Previous Souls games have always had an in-game explanation for why the player character cannot die, whether it be the undead curse or waking from a dream. It seems like Shadows Die Twice will have another in-game explanation for why the player pushes through failure again and again. Later on, we even get a look at its revival mechanic, but we'll cover that later. Torch-bearing enemies and dogs makes this look very like a Souls game, but the implication of a cover mechanic in this shot is notable, as it implies an element of stealth. Which would make sense, cause you're a ninja. Speaking of being a ninja, we get a look at some vertical traversal here up on the roof, and plenty more sneaking around. Here we get one of From's iconic door opening sequences, which looks very similar to the animation used in Dark Souls. But let's take a step back. Over footage of the young prince, we hear the following dialogue. Your master still lives. They'll soon make use of his bloodline. So it sounds like the Ashina clan don't just want to kill the prince. There's something else going on here. They need to use his blood for something. While the setting of Sekiro might be different from what we've seen in Soulsborne games, these enemies strongly evoke the hollows of the undead Berg or the torch-wielding citizens of Yharnam. Here we get an awesome look at some prosthetic arm transformations, which seem to work similarly to Bloodborne's trick weapons. This one involves a hatchet, which has a forceful attack that breaks the guard of an enemy. Now this shot gives us our first look at the grappling hook, which will let you hook onto key objects like these jutting branches. During this battle, we see kanji symbols appear between the player and the enemy, a possible status effect or enchantment of some kind. This exchange also shows how swords can be used to block. In our demo, we were told that perfectly blocking enemy attacks could build up your own posture and break down the enemies, a system very similar to poise from Dark Souls that involves staggering enemies. During this same battle, we see another trick item that seems to create a temporary shield. A scene later, we see a kanji briefly displayed before this creature attacks. The creature also very closely resembles the Brick Ogres from Bloodborne. Sekiro will have plenty of huge enemies to contend with, like this gross guy here, who appears to be using bad breath or vomit to apply a status effect to his blade. I think it's fair to say weapon buffs will be a feature. One of the most interesting moments in the trailer comes at this point when the player dies. We hear, Your death won't come easily. Before the player revives from the exact point they died. Thanks to what is most certainly an instantaneous revive, the player is able to get revenge on the enemy that downed them. Now this is very different to the Soulsborne series, where death meant respawning from the nearest bonfire or lamp. 
However, we do know that Sekiro's revive mechanic will be limited somehow, so this ability won't be available to the player all the time. It is from software, after all. Uh, these centipedes are pretty gross. Is it the boss, or is it crawling around the boss, which seems to be a sinister statue? Here we see a really cool fight against an enemy on horseback. The player notably appears to use the grappling hook in battle and then later uses what seems to be a consumable item to stagger the horse. Finally, title card. According to Reddit user Suzaku, the word Sekiro is a shortening of Sekiwon Noro, which means one-armed wolf. You could roughly translate it to something like lone wolf, half wolf, or bi wolf, as Seki means one half of a pair, but it essentially refers to the protagonist, the one-armed wolf, only having one arm. But wait, that's not all. At the very, very end, we get a quick glimpse of this giant snake. It's probably worth pointing out that despite its feudal Japanese setting, Sekiro isn't entirely worried about historical accuracy. All that we saw of Bloodborne before it was released was limited to the early sections of Yharnam, when it appeared to be a gothic werewolf game. Then we got Cosmic Horror. Sekiro's combination of Japanese history and folklore, and From's love of building wild new worlds for us to explore, means it'll probably take us to some weird and wonderful places. For more on Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, check out our interview with From Software and the trailer in full. And for everything else, stick with IGN.